I get this question a lot. What salesperson wouldn't like to know how to speed up a sale? This is one of those holy grails of selling, like, where do I find qualified prospects who have budget ready to spend? You might already be guessing what my attitude is towards this question, but let's treat it as a serious inquiry for the sake of this video. I do have some thoughts on the matter. No silver bullet though, so if you're looking for that, you can drop now and go look for it elsewhere. Don't have it here. All right, if you're still with me, here's thought number one on how to speed up a sale. It's on you. You are a major factor in this equation. Okay, look, there are two kinds of salespeople. The ones who are totally responsive to every inquiry from a prospect, honor every commitment quickly, don't make simple mistakes, and especially big ones, and even anticipate what the prospect might need to make a favorable decision. Then there's the other kind of salesperson. I've talked about this one a lot in mistakes videos on this channel. They're behind on their email, they don't use a task management system to ensure they don't forget anything, and they don't know the meaning of the word proactive. Which kind are you? Be honest now, because you can't get better if you can't face the truth about where you're coming up short. Here's a little story that I have to share about this point. I've been working on a deal on behalf of a client with a sales rep. We'll call this sales rep Steve. It's been nearly a month since I've started working with Steve, and believe me when I say that Steve wishes that this deal would have closed sooner. Of course he does. And honestly, me too, and my client too. Steve is really good at one thing, following up. Steve constantly checks in with me about the deal. A little too much actually, but I won't fault Steve for that. I'd rather Steve follow up more than less. And, this, and I feel the same way about you. Now the problem is, I've asked Steve some questions and not always gotten the answer. This has happened more than once and it slows down the deal. Finally, we were close to making a deal. I was ready to tell my client that everything is in place for them to make their final decision. But then Steve made a calculation error in the final proposal. There were parts that just weren't adding up. I did not like that for two reasons. Well, one, it's causing me to spend more time on this deal than I want to, which is annoying. And two, it's causing me to question if this is a good company to work with. Like I was starting to wonder if Steve and Steve's company was a company that I wanted to recommend my client do business with. You know what I mean? I really wish Steve had gone through everything with a fine tooth comb before sending it to me to ensure accuracy in the proposal. This bugs me when they don't do that. I told Steve that I was unhappy to see this clear error in their calculation and was wondering if his company could be trusted. I had to tell it to him straight. I really wanted Steve to get it. Steve got the point and corrected the error quickly. At this point, it looks like the deal's going to go through, but it almost didn't. So first thing, make sure you're on top of everything. Never be the source of the slowdown. This is absolutely the best way to speed up a sale. And it might be the area where you really need to focus. But I do have some other ideas here. The next thought is to put forth your best proposal the first time. I've often told people in my classes that if you do a solid job of taking clients through the sales process, then the close should come naturally. It should just fall into place. The prospect will want to do business with you because you've established that they have the money authority, and desire, and the product or service that you're presenting is a good fit for them and there's some urgency. When you have all of this in place, the deal should close about as quickly as possible. Makes sense, right? However, if you don't listen well and propose a solution that doesn't take into account what they've indicated during the needs discovery portion of your sales process, then you might miss the mark with your proposal. What I've seen happen in the past is a salesperson submits a proposal that's way more than what the prospect had in mind. Why is that? Wishful thinking. Being overly optimistic about what the client is willing to invest in. This 
slows down the sale, and sometimes kills it. Now, of course you want to do a big deal, but if the client hasn't given you any indication that they have a big budget, then you can lose the deal by overproposing. So be super careful about this. Have you ever heard that it's easier to do business with someone who's already spent money with you than it is to get someone to spend with you the first time? I'm not suggesting that you submit small proposals just to get your foot in the door, although sometimes that's what the client is asking for. What I'm saying is don't shoot for the moon unless you have a sense that it's the right thing to do. Okay, here's the third idea, which is obvious, but it needs to be stated. Put a deadline on the proposal and offer something special if it closes by that date. Many people put a deadline with no incentive. Give the prospect an incentive to move the deal along a little faster. Companies do this with invoices. Pay in 10 days and get 2% off. You don't have to wait until you invoice your prospect to use this tactic. Let them know that you'll take 5% off the price if they sign within 10 days. Is that an incentive? Absolutely for the budget minded it is. Or throw in something like free support or an enhancement that they would appreciate that would have cost them extra money. Have you seen situations where concerts have a pre-sale period for holders with a certain credit card? That's a good incentive to close the deal faster. What I'm encouraging is for you to get creative here. People will jump on incentives when you're creative and they're tailor-made. Here's my last idea, which isn't what you think, but I can assure you that it works. Get more deals into your pipeline. The reason you're worried about a deal closing is because you don't have enough deals in the works. The more deals you have going, the more deals you'll have closing all on their own without any pushing from you beyond gently hovering in the background ready to move as soon as they say they're ready to go. This absolutely works. I remember to, during the early years of my business, I'd be so concerned about each and every deal because I had so few. I was desperate to close them and wondered what I could do. And this is the boat that you're in now if you're worrying about a few deals and how to speed them up. What I found out was that there wasn't much I could do except to relax and focus on getting more deals going. You need to trust me on this. Once you get more deals in your pipeline, you'll find that the deals start balancing out and falling into place one at a time, giving you a dependable revenue stream. And that helps you sleep at night. This is what winners do. The one mistake you don't want to make, which will work against you, is to push too hard to get deals done. If you follow up too much, remember what I mentioned about Steve? you'll actually drive the client away from doing business with you because you're being annoying and pushy. Remember the one thing prospects universally hate is a pushy salesperson. Don't be one of those. Instead, follow the ideas I've shared here in this video and you'll be in much better shape closing deals faster than before and more than before. Good luck. If you like this video, please like it comment on it and share it with others. And of course, if you haven't subscribed to the channel yet, please do that. And if you want to email me with any of your questions or comments, you can reach me all the time at michaelandbuildandbalance.com. Thank you so much.